When proving identities, we are required to prove one side of an equation equal to the other side. In the process, we work with the left-hand side, or LHS, independently to the right-hand side, or RHS. As a general rule, and as strange as it may seem, we work with the more complex looking of the two sides, which is normally the side that requires greater algebraic manipulation. Remember that good algebra underpins the manipulation taking place to prove the identity. Here are some basic steps to follow. 1. Always try to express all terms in terms of sine and cosine. For example, tan of angle x is equal to sine x over cos x from quotient identities. 2. When adding fractions, find the lowest common denominator, the LCD, and simplify. In doing so, the numerators can be reduced using identities. And 3. Look to see if we can use the compound or double angle formulae. It is usually easier to change compound angles to single angles. So, when one side of an identity contains single angles only, and the other side a combination of compound and double and single angles, we must choose to work with the side with the compound or double angles first. Example 1. Using compound and double angles to prove identities. In this example, you're required to prove that sine 3x over sine x minus cos 3x over cos x is equal to 2. Since there is more we can do with the left-hand side of the equation, we start working with it first. Also notice the fractions. Hence, we will need to find the LCD, or lowest common denominator, to further simplify. By finding the LCD of sine x times cos x on the left-hand side, we can subtract the two fractions to get sine 3x times cos x minus cos 3x times sine x, and that's all over sine x times cos x. In the numerator of the fraction, you have the form sine cos minus cos sine of the same angles. This is a clue that you will need to use compound angles to reduce the numerator further. So, in the numerator, we recognize the sine compound angle expansion, and we can rewrite the numerator as sine of 3x minus x, in brackets, and leave the denominator unchanged as sine x, times cos x. Simplifying the brackets, we get sine 2x over sine x times cos x. Sine 2x in the numerator of the fraction can be expanded using double angles to give 2 sine x cos x, and this is still over sine x times cos x. There are common factors in the fraction, which we can cancel, and we'll be left with just 2 on the left-hand side. So, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Hence, we have proved that sine 3x over sine x minus cos 3x over cos x is equal to 2. Example 2. Using double angle expansions to prove identities. In this example, you must prove that 1 plus sine 2x all over sine squared x is equal to 1 plus cos x over sine x, in brackets, all squared. We will prove the identity by working with the right-hand side first. Expand 1 plus cos x over sine x all squared by squaring the terms within the brackets. You get 1 squared plus 2 cos x over sine x plus cos squared x over sine squared x when you expand the brackets and add like terms. Next, add the terms together by finding the LCD, the lowest common denominator, equal to sine squared x. You get sine squared x plus 2 cos x times sine x plus cos squared x all over the LCD sine squared x. In the numerator, you see the expansion of the sine double angle, hence you can rewrite 2 sine x times cos x as sine 2x, so the numerator simplifies to 1 plus sine 2x, and that's all over sine squared x, so the left-hand side equals 
the right-hand side. Hence you have proved the identity 1 plus sine 2x all over sine squared x is equal to 1 plus cos x over sine x in brackets all squared.